Here's where the big problem comes in. If you set the speed to a speed that you cannot match on your terminal emulator and you're not able to get back into the, the uh, router to uh, change that, say that you're connected through the console port and you change that speed and you can't match it on the other side or you can match it but it's a speed that's too high for the Cisco device to support, you're fucked because it won't you won't be able to get back in the console port you'll have to find either you know the auxiliary port or some other method to get in there or you'll have to reboot the router to clear that setting so if you do set this for God's sake don't fucking write it until you're hundred percent sure that that's a working speed I'm actually gonna skip this slide because we did this with the actual application so you've seen this how to set this okay so we've got our uh, laptop connected to the console line let's say we've got our terminal emulator and we've matched speeds on that console line with the terminal emulator and we found ourselves on a relatively fast in the uh, X modem world speed that we can agree on. We've got our iOS image and we're ready to move this sucker over. So how do we do this? Well, if iOS is up and running, and I use that as a big if because the only time I've ever had to use X modem is when I have a device that the uh, iOS image has just become corrupted and it can't load an iOS image and I'm doing this from ROMMON. We'll get to that in a few slides. Because otherwise, you know, if, if iOS is up and running, you have access to, at the very least, TFTP, and you can use TFTP to move this file over. But I digress. Let's just say we're stuck with Xmodem. So Xmodem is actually one of the copy options. So, uh, you know, if you're going to copy the image to your flash or, you know, whatever RAM that you're using, you just issue the copy and do a question mark, and you can see that X and Y modem are both available. So the uh, full command would be copy X modem and then where you want to put the file in this case it's uh, flash 2 on the uh, 2610 and then you would specify the image if you want to erase flash uh, generally not but and then you go ahead and hit enter and I'll come back to this in just a second this is directly from the Cisco documentation copying a file using FTP, RCP, TFP, blah 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 any other transfer protocol is going to be much faster than copying a file using X modem uh, use the X modem command only if you do not have access to any of these other file transfer methods fair enough and I've already told you pretty much the same probably not as eloquently the copy operation is performed through the console or auxiliary port the aux port which supports hardware flow control is recommended. Well, thanks a lot Cisco, then I'll go ahead and use the auxiliary port, which is what I did here in this example, and again your mileage may vary. Uh, this might be platform slash iOS dependent, but in this case on a 2610 I was not able to use the auxiliary port. It tells me I can only do this from the console port, so it said go fuck yourself. I'm not gonna let you do this. So just keep that in mind. If you're in a situation where you're using X modem, have the documentation up. Um, because you're not going to be doing this daily, God forbid. If you are, you have a horrible, horrible job. Get the hell out. But like a password recovery, it's always good, no matter how many times you have done it, to have the documentation in front of you. So some more Cisco lies. I don't know if they're lies, but uh, it says that you're not going to see anything displayed over the port when this is working. Um, that wasn't true in my case. It says you can put on logging buffered, which I have on all my routers anyways, to send it all to the console port during the file transfer. So maybe that was what it was that I had logging buffered um, already enabled and they weren't lying to me. Sorry, Cisco. I'll never diss you again. Uh, so here we go. We see it in action here. So now we've moved it to the console port, issued the same command, specified the same uh, iOS image. We don't want to erase all our flash. And it says beginning the X modem or X modem 1K, which I don't know what the hell that is, transfer now and it'll show you here it's progress this is pretty nice but look at this right here your ETA is two hours and 48 minutes and eight seconds you can go check out a movie you might not be able to get in one of the Lords of the Rings but uh, you'd be able to see you know that or what six uh, sitcoms so you've, you've got plenty of time to kill when you're doing this uh, like I said, X modem transfer is slow. So depending on the baud speed you use and the size of the file, an X modem file transfer can range from irritatingly slow to agonizingly slow. And I'll say it one more time, this method of file transfer should be only used if there are no other options. Unfortunately, when you're generally going to be using this, it's going to be when your router has a corrupt iOS image on it and you have no other option. That's where the agonizingly slow bit comes in because you're probably going to have a bunch of monkeys over your shoulder asking questions. How long before this router comes back up? What's going on? Why is it taking so long? Blah, 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 blah. It is what it is, my Snuggies. So here we go. I ran a couple of tests at home 
and that iOS image that I showed you on the last slide is uh, turns out to be about 8 megs and here I'm sending it with a 9600 baud speed and you could see it predicted it would take 2 hours and 48 minutes it took 2 hours and 38 minutes so the ETA is actually pretty accurate on this ends up being 159 minutes which is 2.65 hours which will seem like an absolute eternity when your device is down and that comes out to 6.5 kilobits per second uh, again this just shows that baud and bits per second are not the same I won't go into uh, a big discussion of what the difference is and how baud works but there is some actually some interesting physics with it if you want to check it out uh, so anywho the uh, same file was sent with that speed which I found to be the max speed on at least my Cisco devices uh, 115,200 baud and this is actually relatively fast blazingly fast compared to the 9600 baud still slow compared to you know our normal transfer options it's um, got this done in about 16 and a half minutes so you can see there's a significant difference so if you can get the baud rate cranked up it's gonna make your life a lot easier X modem with Rommon and this is where I've had to use this beast like I said if you have Cisco iOS up and running you generally have the option at the very least to do a TFTP uh, transfer from a directly connect laptop in this case on the on the console line so you wouldn't choose X modem for those of you who don't know what Raman mode is what this is is basically when your device cannot successfully load its uh, operating system its iOS it's going to go into a stripped down version of iOS uh, this is kind of analogous to safe mode in a uh, Windows operating system in that you just have a very limited a subset of commands that are available in Raman mode you're going to issue the X modem command and then you have a series of arguments that you can provide with that command I'm not going to go through all of these the biggies are oh, this is kind of interesting you can use Y modem protocol for higher throughput don't know that that's true didn't play with it but anywho the the biggies are setting that data rate so remember back in iOS we would do this under the uh, port when you're in Raman, you don't have access to that set of commands. So you would set the data rate here in BOD uh, with this command. So you would issue X modem hyphen S, and then in our case, we're probably going to want to try this 115,000 BOD. Uh, they've got BPS here. Shame on you, Cisco. Don't make me launch into my boring ass discourse on the difference between BOD and BPS. Anywho, so again make sure you can match it on both sides then the next one that you need to know is just the file name you know whatever the iOS image that you're going to transfer over you're going to have to specify that and this is directly from the Cisco documentation here they're saying that you know you issue X modem hyphen C that's for checksumming I guess it's a good idea it shows you that everything went over correctly it's optional you don't need to do this so and then this is the iOS image version obviously they're fine with whatever the uh, port was set but if we remember back to this slide you can set the baud rate of the uh, port with the uh, hyphen s argument like we saw the difference between the, the default 9600 versus the 115,000 is significant so anyways you issue this command and it will go through all this you can read this and you're good to go it's going to slowly very slowly add that uh, iOS image to your device and hopefully it gets on there and it's not corrupted this time and you can reload the device and you're back in business alright wrapping this sucker up so X modem as we've talked about over and over and over again is it's a file transfer protocol that you can use to get an iOS image on a Cisco device uh, you will need a PC connected to either the aux port and we saw that it's probably going to be the console port and then a, a terminal emulator that supports the X modem or possibly the Y modem protocol and then your iOS image that you're going to slide on there you're most likely not going to use this except in an emergency situation which was the scenario that we saw at the end there with Raman uh, that's the only time I've ever had to use it it's good to be aware that it's there it's good to know you know the little caveats especially matching the uh, the port speed and this is an inherently slow file transfer mechanism so uh, if you can bump up that baud rate then go ahead and do it we saw that you know in our case it meant the difference between two and a half hours and 16 minutes uh, one thing I will throw in there is that you might not ever have to deal with this because newer iOS images as I've seen have support for TFTP in the ROM mon so if you're in ROM mon mode you could set up a TFTP transfer and that's going to be faster I'm gonna let you go here uh, thanks for joining me in the packet lab again I hope this is beneficial and I hope to see you again soon